Hi guys, it's Michelle from The Healing Heart. So, I would like to thank you guys for coming back to my channel. Um, thank you to the new subscribers and those that have found me just recently. I really appreciate you being here. Um, so, what do I do here? Well, I'm a mom first. I'm a wife. I'm a daughter. I'm a sister. And I'm a metaphysical enthusiast. I love doing all things spirit. I blog, I write, and I channel spirit. And I love to help people shift their awareness and to help people make a difference in their life, to get themselves from one stage to the next, to open up their dreams, to make new possibilities. And that's what I'm gonna to talk to you about today. I actually picked up this really cool, um, it's called a breath or breath journal, breathing journal. And I am all about journaling. I don't always journal the same. Um, part of the reason why I call myself the healing heart. Well, there's many reasons for that. But um, one of the reasons is I do healing with energy, um, with frequency, and I do it with art. And I'll actually, I'll show you. I think I've got... Somebody's here. I'll just have to cover up their name so you can't see. I don't want to share their information. Keep that part private. So I'll just show you while I've got you here. Okay, so I'm going to cover up their name so you can't see. So I'll just put this little piece of paper over here. So this is what it looks like, basically. That's one person's. I'll show you somebody else's. can see that okay and um so what that is is when somebody comes to me for healing they're coming to me to um and sometimes they don't even or don't always know here's another one here too this one that had a lot of stuff done so they don't necessarily know always why it is that they're coming to me um and spirit guides the healing so it's not me that's actually doing the healing. I'm the conduit for the healing. And so I am helping facilitate it. And um, in the beginning, I'll connect to someone's energy. And I start to feel the energy flow in my body. I start to feel that person. I might start to feel some aches and pains in my body that they're experiencing. Um, and then I'll begin to get some information, maybe about what's going on emotionally with them. Um maybe some things that are ready to shift. And once I start to get that information, then they let me know when it's time to start to move the energy. And that's when I get out the artwork and I start to do symbols and lines and it's all inspired by spirit. So I just follow along what it is that they are doing for that particular individual, which is pretty much different for each person. It's not always the same, right? But anyway, so Jeez. I'm I'm big on art and on journaling and writing and um, again so that's why I call myself the healing heart H dash A R T because I'm a funny play on words so um but here's the thing why is journaling such a great idea and it doesn't have to always be something that you know you're cracking open this book and you've got to write pages and pages of all this fantastic stuff because some people that I'll talk to say, I don't know what to write. Like, I don't know what to journal. And then they get into a position where they're starting to um, judge what it is that they're journaling or they feel that there's an expectation to what it is that they're writing. So when you're choosing to document a journey, which is what I like to call it, journaling is to document a stage in your life. Um, some people are diary writers and always have been. I know people that write an entry in a diary for every day or every month, every occasion, and that's how they express themselves. Um, I know some people that do poetic writing, and I do some of that as well. Um, and that's such an awesome way to express your feelings, um, to express that energy because when you 
when you do some form of journaling, whether it be art journaling, which is something that I do regularly. And so I may not always write. Sometimes I put all of my um, thoughts into cartoons, into um, artwork, into shapes, into symbols, uh, whatever it is that is resonating with me at that day. So it doesn't have to be something traditional. It can be whatever helps you connect to energy and what helps you communicate that energy and express that energy. Because the most important thing to understand is when we're doing any type of um, uh, any type of journaling or work or anything like that is we're expressing ourselves. And we don't have to express ourselves because somebody else is going to be reading it. We don't have to worry whether that, you know, a spelling is perfect or whether something looks a certain way because you're doing this for yourself. You're documenting your emotions, your experiences, your beliefs. And it's also a really awesome way to process. And I would say that is my favorite thing to do is when I'm processing something um, and my goodness, these last few months have been really big on processing um, relationships and just interactions with people. And processing doesn't mean that something bad has happened. Processing means that we have emotion. Processing means that we have a reaction somewhere within us. And rather than pushing it away, we are willing to come to terms with it or look at it or feel it and express it. Because as most of you may already know this, when we have emotions or we have feelings and the experiences, the traumas that become trapped in our energetic field, in our chakra system, they eventually, so the dis-ease that we feel eventually becomes disease in our body. And so when we learn to process, when we use tools such as journaling, as art, as anything, um, and of course, exercise, walking, uh, petting your dog, petting your cat, connecting with your children, as long as it's something for you that feels good, that allows you to express. And particularly why doing something with yourself to process why that is so good is because it allows you to have greater understanding. It allows you to have the opportunity to view things from a different point of view, right? Because we walk through this world with this singular perspective. We walk through this world as human beings and we see things out of our focus, out of our viewfinder, right? So everything that we are experiencing, we're experiencing it from our point of view. And a lot of the times when we're, if we're not really aware, consciously looking at that 180 degree, that, uh, that complete polar, um, seeing it from other people's perspective, we're seeing it from the perspective of our own experiences, of our own beliefs, our own, um, well, our own everything. And part of being mindful and part of being aware means that we are able to see things from another point of view. And when we take time to process through journaling, through artwork, through taking time through with yourself, through meditation, through breath work, whatever it is that works for you, it allows you to see something from another point of view. And sometimes we'll realize that maybe the way that we saw something in the beginning is not truly the way it is, or we may realize that there's possibly more truth to one thing. And that is the truth, that there is not a black and white in everything. There are many different versions of truth, especially when it comes to different people. You know, we all have our own beliefs. We all have our own experiences. And so therefore, um, what's right for one is not right for another. So something that you could do, and I mean, if you don't or aren't able to get out and get yourself a journal, 
grab some paper, put some paper together, keep some by your bedside. Um, there's a couple of things in this one, which I think is really good that I'm going to mention here. And some of the questions that prompt in this book are, um, what or who do I need for support? So when you're going through something, what do you rely on for support? How can I make a difference in my own life? How can I make a difference in somebody else's life? Allowing us to think outside of the, um, the realm of self, understanding that the caring of ourself, the caring of um, the reliance on ourself and using the tools for ourself are um, most important because really at the end of the day, you really only do have yourself. But it's also understanding um, how can you make a difference for somebody else? And the next one is, um, how can I make a difference for somebody else? And how can I honor my, myself and my own boundaries? So that's kind of a little, um, link to the first or to the second question there, because wanting to care and take care and making a difference for other people can sometimes for a lot of us that, and I, for one was a perpetual people pleaser. I also had, um, codependent relationships and, you know, would, um, was very codependent on people in my family. Uh, it doesn't just mean relationships, but codependent on what other people thought of me. Right. So that would then lead to people pleasing because I would then be so concerned and consumed with trying to validate and justify what it is that I believe because I didn't want other people to think poorly of me that I would start to sacrifice my own beliefs that I would start to sacrifice what was important to me and I would put myself second. So all my energy would get put out for other people and then I didn't have enough for myself, which led to chronic sickness. So it's a pattern, right? That we, that we see. So your boundaries are really, really important and it does take time to work on those. And it's not something that is easy, but it is necessary. Um, what can I let go of? And again, this is part of the, the boundaries, um, for ourselves, because whether it's physical things, um, I am still working on this, but I am a collector. And I realized that my codependent behaviors also led to me collecting things. And because I'd always had a very addictive personality and I did deal with addiction, addiction also played itself out in other ways in my life, such as shopping, uh, shopping for things that I didn't necessarily need because it would create a sense of euphoria in me to purchase something or to obtain something. And when it would become a problem because it was racking up bills or because it was, um, filling up space that I didn't have, that's when it was starting to affect my life. So you see all of these things play out in so many different ways. So is it letting go of habits? Is it letting go of items in your home that you no longer need? Is it letting go of expectations that you have for yourself or that you may possibly have for other people? Is it letting go of the idea that you need to be something for somebody else? Um, so a couple more prompts here, which new activity would I like to try? So is there something that you've always wanted to try? that maybe you think that you couldn't try or you weren't able to do before? Is there something that you could introduce into your life to give it a try? Because who knows, there might be something that you never thought of that you would really like. And once you do it, it's something that you really enjoy. So don't be afraid to try new things, to experiment with new things. Um, it's all part of our self-discovery. It's all part of our healing and all part of us getting to know ourselves. Um, how can I demonstrate kindness? And remember, kindness does start with yourself first. So learning to be kind and compassionate with yourself through all processes is one of the most important things that each of us can learn. Because when we learn to be kind with ourselves, it's much easier to be kind with other people. 
And, you know, a lot of times, and we've all dealt with it with times where people are not kind to us and that can create resentment and can create, uh, you know, um, distress within ourselves. But when we learn to be kind and compassionate with ourselves in all ways that we are, and we understand that none of us are perfect. We also understand that people act the way they do for many different reasons. And it doesn't mean that you have to put up with it, but can we be more compassionate to other people? And when we learn to be more compassionate to ourselves, we carry less distress with us and we don't carry on the behaviors of other people when they project it onto us. So um, we can get into that one a little deeper another time, but um, what can I be more mindful of? Can I be more mindful of my time? Can I be more mindful of how I, how I take advantage of my time each day? Am I wasting time? Can I be more mindful of my behaviors? Can I be more mindful of my feelings? Can I be more mindful of how I speak to myself? Can I be more mindful of how I speak to others? Because remember, you can be projecting yourself outwards lead to everyone else. And we've all heard of people that carry a mask and they can be expressing themselves as one way and then feeling completely different inside. Well, it is the way that you feel inside that creates the reality that you experience. So if you are feeling um, very poorly about yourself, if your confidence is rattled about yourself inside, then you're going to be creating experiences that help you build confidence. So you'll be creating things that take place or creating situations um, that help you practice your confidence. Um, again, that's something that we could get into in a, a totally other video. But um, what habit would I not only like to remove from my routine, but what habit would I like to include with my routine? One habit that I really worked on is um, not only my diet, which I'm currently working on and, um, but the vitamins and that's been going on for a few years. So I would slowly introduce new vitamins into my diet. Um, and what's right for me doesn't mean that that's right for you, but I had put on an awful lot of weight after my last child and through chemo and through, um, all of those treatments. And so you know, really my weight became something, something that I really would stress about for a long time. I was very sensitive about it. And now, um, I, I want to feel good. So I'm not necessarily satisfied with the weight that I'm at now, but I know I'm doing something to work on it. I know that I have made changes to become the healthier version of me. And that may never look like a certain whatever, but it's not about that anymore. But that was part of my path. So some of my habits have to do with me being more mindful about why I'm eating and um, what is my body telling me? What does my body require? Eating for energy. Um, how can I reward myself? So do you reward yourself? What do you do to... Um, pat yourself on the back. What do you do to say, Hey, good job. And it doesn't mean that you have to accomplish something to an expectation, but what do you do just for being you just for going through the day and being yourself? Do you give yourself a really nice bubble bath? Do you go outside in nature? Do you treat yourself to something? Make sure that you're doing just as important as it is to uh, keep going forward every day and to um, take care of ourselves. We want to take care of treating ourselves well, too. So we do a lot for other people to do nice things for them, but make sure that you are doing nice things for yourself as well. Just as important. So the rest of this has, um, it just has like a, um, a lot of prompts like this week summed up in one sentence, a memory that I should share. Um, I worry I might reframe what, what's this a worry. Okay. Oh, this is a good one. A worry I might reframe in a positive light. 
So, and then, then we'll put this down for a second because that's quite a bit of this, but um, worry I might reframe in a positive light. So when going back to speaking of the inner dialogue that we carry inside of ourselves, something that we may be worrying about could be, um, well, I'll give you one of mine as an example. How am I going to get all these things done in this little amount of time? How am I going to meet all of the expectations that I put on myself today? How am I going to get everything done? And so reframing that might be, what can I delegate to other people? Where can I ask for help? Um, another positive way of looking at that, um, of course, is gratitude and having gratitude for having people to lean on, having gratitude for um, being able to do what it is that I do, having gratitude to be busy. Um, I don't know if that's necessarily the best example there, but the idea that they're getting at is, you know, if we've got worries, whether the worries are about our kids, whether they're about our jobs, our families, our friends, um, finances, our homes, um, our health, you know, all the different things that we think about and can consume our minds. How can we change that thought? How can we reframe that thought? And that's some of the hardest work that we'll do. Some of the hardest work that we do is being able to change the patterns in how we've always been. And um, I come from a generation of warriors. So, you know, um, even in my family, my mom has always been a warrior. And uh, my grandma was a warrior. And it's just something that came very naturally. But worrying, and I can't remember where I heard this, because it's not me that said this right, and I'm probably going to kill the way it, it was um, said. But worrying is an energy is a waste of energy. Um, worrying is a, what was it? Worrying is a false or is an illusion of being in control. That's what it was. Worrying is an illusion of being in control because worrying gives us the sense of we're doing something to create the outcome that we want. And so that we give ourselves some sense of control by being able to put energy into it over and over and over again and allowing it to consume us, believing that that's going to protect us somehow or change the outcome when that is the complete opposite of what it does. That worrying creates a negative vibration, negative energy, which then translates into creating outcomes that we do not desire because we're focusing normally with worry on the what ifs. What if it goes wrong? What if this happens? What if I can't do this? Rather than focus on what if I do? And what do I want this to look like? And what's the best case scenario? So, and that's, that's hard work. That's not easy. We did not grow in a society that supported that way of thinking. And for most of us, we used worry as a defense mechanism. So it takes a lot of work. And this is something that I work on every day because it's not definitely not something that you just, um, it gets easier. So you, you're able to maybe see the brighter side of things or focus on those side of things. But when you realize, and I think this was the really big point for me, is when you realize that everything is energetic, everything is energy. And when you realize that what it is that you, your beliefs and what you focus on, what you put emotional charge to, creates the vibrational experiences, the reality it creates the opportunities, the people, the places, the things, that everything is affected by that in your reality. And you can only do it for yourself. Nobody else can do it for you. This is by each one of us. And 
if we say, well, yeah, well, I don't really believe that and I don't want to do that. I don't understand that because it, it's science and science backs this up. But if we say, well, I don't really want to do it, we're still doing it anyway. So whether we believe it or not, we're still doing it. So why not put what you do want in your mind and practice doing that and start to flip the switch and change it because that then gives you the opportunity to experience something new. But it does take time and practice to do that. So I just wanted to sit with you guys for a little bit if you're still here after this uh, 25 minute video <laughs> of me talking um, and you're still here, then thank you very much for still being here and listening. I hope you received something out of this today to help you create, um, to create your dreams, to make more possibilities in your life, to create more positivity, to accept where you are, to be yourself, to be true to yourself, to be true to your heart, to focus on what you're doing and not focus on what other people think you should be doing, and um, to be strong in your beliefs, to keep going each and every day. So I love each and every one of you. Thank you so much for being here. And I will see you next time. Oh, and don't forget, um, I'm going to be on Channeling Eric Live. Um, I'm not sure if it's going to be tomorrow or next Wednesday. Uh, I'll try to post something on there, um, on my Facebook page or on here. So if you get a chance to check me out there, um, Eric and I are going to be asking questions with Elisa, his mom. All right. Thank you so much, guys. I love you, hearts. Mwah. Bye.